Oh, hi there, guys. Didn't see that. Welcome back. Live stream number four. Same ship, different day. What are we at? Day 139 on board. Hopefully, this will be one of the last on board, the Coral Princess. As much as I love it here, it is, I think, time to go home. So today, what we're going to be talking about, I see there's a few of you in the chat already. Kat, you got there nice and early. Welcome. Thank you for that. From London. Clinton, you're there as well. From Alberta, Canada. That's quite a distance. And uh, Larry from San Francisco. Thanks for jumping in on the chat. I may have more of you. I'm going to have to keep refreshing my chat feed. I think the internet today is definitely a little bit slower than usual. So do please bear with me should I cut out at any time or we have any interferences or if I suddenly pause, I'll stay very still for a long time. Um, so today we're thinking about the port operations and the fact that we're keeping these ships alongside in port. I did have a lot of questions. Hi there, Erica from the Midlands. I see you. Hello from Lincolnshire. Charlotte, uh, evening from very hot Swindon. I like that a lot of people from the UK are staying up to watch that, to watch this. So thank you guys. I appreciate that. It's what, 11 o'clock back home. So thanks for sticking with me. I've just finished work myself. Maybe you guys are getting back to work as well. Who knows? Um, yeah, so a lot of people have been asking me about the port operations and what we're doing whilst we're on side. And as you saw in the picture, that's actually the Caribbean princess astern of us. And that's what the picture was for this uh, stream. So hopefully that enticed you. I am going to try reset my chat so I can see it nice and live. Hey, Poopa Ray, Emma, good evening. I see you there in the chat. Cheshire, Massachusetts. We're going global, guys. Hawaii, that's a good one. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks for checking in. Okay, Brisbane, Danny, always a pleasure. Welcome. Right, so shall we kick off with question number one whilst people are just getting settled into the chat and uh, essentially thinking up some questions. Maybe this will whet your appetite for it. So we're looking at one from HGV Driver there it's from the UK. He asks, what are your duties during a navigational watch when alongside in ports? Obviously at the moment, no navigation will be needed. So what do you do for four hours? Also your idea of a virtual tour sounds great. Thank you, I'm working on that still. Um, so basically a navigational well, it's not very navigational or watching port, is it? So basically, you ever heard of the saying, um, keeping a weather eye? I think it applies in this situation because obviously on a cruise ship, weather is very important, especially a ship of this size with this kind of windage. Should winds or squalls come through whilst you're in port, then it can easily lift you off the dock. You already got all that accommodation space and that could potentially break your mooring lines, slit the gangway and then you've got yourself in a whole heap of trouble. So that's number one, we're keeping a lookout. We're still keeping a lookout in port, also for traffic and other things. New subscriber, see that there? Um, so yeah, that's essentially point one. Then on top of that, there's two officers on the bridge and in port, we're only required to have one up there at all time, even though both of us will still take the watch together. Uh, usually the senior take, stays on the bridge. When it comes, we rotate. I like to do rounds myself quite a lot. Uh, and we'll go around, we'll check the gangways uh, during a normal uh, day if we're in port. Obviously, in a cruise ship, we have lots of passengers on and off the gangway, so we need to make sure they're rigged safely and appropriately for the port. Uh, with that as well, we have a range of tides. So, in, for example, in Alaska, many of you may have been and you will have seen the gangways move from one deck to the next. That's something that we need to coordinate from the bridge because of the huge tidal ranges we get there. Uh, that's obviously a big thing as well. Um, what else have we got? So cargo ops in that sense, for most cargo ships, obviously your port watch will be watching the cargo and making sure containers and grain and bulk cargo will be put in the right place on the ship. For us, our cargo is passengers. So we're watching the movement of passengers on the gangways and on the shore side. Also, it might be taking on of stores. So uh, on turnaround day, we've got a lot of new stores that usually come and they'll be in and we'll be loading them by a forklift. So lots of different things going on. As I was saying, with the mooring lines and the large windage of the ship, they do tend to stretch a bit once you're in port. So the mooring lines may stretch, which means you do need to tighten them. Or again, with the tidal range, you may have to slack them or tighten them up uh, throughout the day. So that's again something else to consider. So port watches can often be far busier than the normal watches. Also, if we have any visitors, often they call the bridge to get permission to bring them on board uh, and things like that, because obviously we overlook security in that sense. 
Uh, manning the bridge is obviously standard for still continued safety, so all fire alarms and smoke detectors go through the bridge, so we still need to be there, and all emergencies will also go through the bridge, so that needs to be manned 24 hours, no matter what the conditions. And then, like I said, general rounds, you get a lot of work going on in port that wouldn't happen at sea, such as maybe, say, the navigational light goes out, they need to replace it. You've got a working at height permit there. You need to go and make sure that they're conducting that safely. They have the right permit there printed with all the signatures and that the bridge and ECR have been informed of that permit going on. And so when I'm conducting my rounds, I'm checking that everybody's working safely in the correct manner with the correct permissions. Uh, and that's also part of a port watch. So it can be quite busy, especially on turnaround day, for example. Um, so it just depends what's going on on board. But it is very important that we have somebody up on the bridge at all times as well as somebody going around to check these things. But thank you for that question, HGV Driver Network UK. That was an excellent question and got me off for this stream. Thank you very much. So here we go. Lou is in the chat. Hi, Lou. Um, Joe from Mississippi. Lots of people coming from all over the place. Anybody got any questions? What's Kim saying? Miss Cruising so much. Hope you're able to get home soon. How many people on your boat are waiting to go home? Um, so, Kim, that's a difficult one, really, because you have have quite a few that are still waiting to go home uh, because the countries haven't yet opened up and they're still basically you know, living as a passenger on board until that an appropriate time where they can go home. So I'd say there's probably about 10 to 15 of those. And then on top of that, you have everybody that's waiting to be changed in their rotation, uh, which you probably have another, I don't know, 30 to 40, maybe more. Um, that's waiting for a new rotation because the contract hasn't quite un has already ended. Uh, but then you also have more that obviously the contracts haven't ended yet, so they're happy to still be on board. Um, but yeah, so at the moment we're looking at just over 130 crew members and that'll be going down. We still have some people in quarantine from joining before. And um, again, that will go up when more relievers come because before we can go home, we have to take more people on board and they will do their two week quarantine as well. So it's changing all the time how many we have. More and more people are going home and more and more people are coming, which is excellent news. I do have some news on my reliever. Hopefully he's going to be here on the 30th of June. Um, he's got confirmation of the contract now, which even though he was in maps before, I think four times to come, he never actually physically got any confirmation from the office, which he has had now. So hopefully that means that by the 30th of June, he'll be on board. That'll be when we're not next alongside in Curacao. He'll come up the gangway. He'll do his quarantine and I shall be home. By the middle of July, I'm just waiting on my flights and confirmation of that date at the moment. But that would be excellent if that goes ahead. Who else is in the chat? Emily Archer, I think I just answered your question, but welcome to the chat. I saw you put some good comments on uh, the video, so thank you for that. Joe, Joe Laferma, you're asking your captain, you or crew member was in a bad storm and got seasick. Uh, I've got seasick a little bit, but nothing too crazy. I've, I've never actually been physically sick. You just feel a little bit worse for wear. Uh, captain, I don't think I've ever seen. I'm not sure that captain would quite admit uh, to it, even if he was. I think he'd just stay in his cabin and keep quiet. Um, I don't know. I certainly would if I was him. Uh, but I'm sure captains have got seasick over the years. There's been some pretty bad storms. Uh, Paul Hutchinson. Airlines have been dispatched, sent to the works with pilots and flight plan. Does cruise line have operation dispatch as a ship file a route plan for the next port? Uh, yes, but it's on a, lot, a much larger scale. We plan our itineraries two years in advance. Obviously, new itineraries have been planned all the time at the moment. Um, so we have a route planned. Then we use a Dolphin WRI weather routing service so they can recommend alternative routes should we expect to encounter some bad weather. Um, so in terms of the route, we advise obviously the company when we leave and that's monitored from shoreside, we have uh, huge centers in Seattle and Miami for Carnival Corporation and then they monitor the ships and so there's people there man 24 seven. So they have a point of contact in an emergency for us should we need requests from help. And also um, they can monitor the ships should they start to go astray or anything. Um, and they can recommend that we either have to return to route or something like that. It just depends on the situation. It's very rare that they're required, uh, but you never know. Um, it is something that we have and all our passages are planned well in advance. They're, they're initially planned by a navigator, then they're cross-referenced by myself as senior second, and then 
the captain has the final signature and the environmental officer also checks all the environmental side as well. So it's, it's, it's seen by a lot of people before it's approved. And then obviously there's recommended routes across the globe and most ships share passage plans as well. So we all tend to take very similar routes within the brand, of course. Um, so it's for going home, Frank. I think I'd answered your question, but thank you. Tanya, good question. What's your favorite room or area on the ship and why? Well, I love the aft deck, uh, looking out the uh, stern at the wake. Um, I think that's the, one of the best views on board. So I tend to go out there when I can, when I've got a bit of time off and if it's a nice sunset or something, I'll go out there um, and watch the sunset. Uh, other than that on board, I like my bed and my cabin. And uh, really, I don't speak of any other areas other than uh, dinner. So when the speciality restaurants are open, I tend to go there at least once or twice a week now, uh, especially with my girlfriend on board. We like to go out and dine and pretend that we're not working for a night, and have a date night. So that's something we tend to do. Danny Black, where are you located at the moment? So we're alongside in Curacao yet again. I can show you on the uh, map, I believe. Let me get that up for you. And you can see the bridge cam up behind me is um, there's a map for you. So we're just just north of Venezuela, staying out of their territorial waters, of course, and um, currently alongside in Curacao. We will be leaving again tomorrow uh, afternoon, about 4 p.m. We're going to be leaving, going back to sea, and we'll be out again until the 30th, until those new joiners arrive. So that's the plan for the coral princess the caribbean princess already left and she's out at sea now producing water and things both of us have bunkered today um which is excellent so we've taken on more fuel i did tell you in the last video that we were going to go to cartagena those plans did change as we've come to get used to and um yeah so we ended up staying thanks danny thanks for that super chat appreciate it and you're welcome for answering the question thanks for the good question I'm letting everybody know where i am um you're doing my job for me um, so I don't know if you guys have noticed, actually, I told you last time about the monkey. We've had a few new joiners since then and I've had to cut it back. I've got a whole, whole zoo here. If you can figure them out, I'll let you uh, try and guess what they are before I tell you. Wait, that's something that we can play in the chat. What's this out here? Christine, Alfie, uh, my question is, once you're off the ship, do you get replaced because of the virus? We have ship with limited crew to keep the float and running. Yes, Christine, I'm not allowed to go home until I've been replaced. That's the rule at the moment. So I'm definitely going to have a reliever coming, like I said, on the 30th of June. And once he's on board, then um, hopefully we can start to talk about me getting home and my flights. Ken Gorm Studios, what type of cabin do you usually have? So I usually have a crew cabin. It's got a window. It's on deck 12. Uh, normally we try to keep the deck officers quite close to the bridge and uh, at the moment I'm lucky enough to have a passenger cabin with a balcony. Uh, obviously there's no passengers on board so they allocated cabins out to the crew members which was nice of them. Charlotte Smith, you got one of them, rabbit? No chicken here I'm afraid, uh, Sandra, sorry about that. Diane, you got one as well, the dog. The one in the centre I think is the best one so hopefully you can see that otherwise I might have to bring it over. Um, Right, should we go to one of the questions from one of the videos? I do want to make sure I get through all these, of course. So the next one is from Chuck Spencer. He was asking, wow, 172 crew on board. Looking at the web, you guys usually have around 900. Big difference. It certainly is. Very quiet around the ship at the moment. How low is the plan to take the crew members? So the plan for, for the minimum non-operational manning for this ship uh, is going to be 128. That's the current plan anyway. That may reduce more. So that's what they've made an assessment for for the moment and the, the minimum safe manning as per the guidelines for the Bermuda Bermuda certificate that's 41 but we never I don't think we'll ever get down that low uh, that ties nicely actually into the next question um, from Cliff he's asking once the ships down to that minimum number which will be 128 what duties are going to keep the folks busy all day. Now I am thinking about making a video about this. I've been going around and taking some footage of what people are doing uh, in the lockdown in terms of work because they're taking this opportunity to get some maintenance done of course um, as much as we can. We are limited on supplies and permissions. It's not like being in dry dock. Um, so we are, you, you will find that 
a lot of the people on board have now more duties than they would have had before with a fewer number obviously the ship still needs to be maintained so people are very busy especially for example the electricians the department's been reduced quite a lot so they're busy going around the ship fixing any issues that we've had and making sure we keep all the emergency lights at least uh, operational one new subscriber there from emdr hopefully you're watching say hello if you are um what else have we got maintenance here yeah, so work orders like i said and general tlc for the ship there's a lot of guys going around um doing maintenance on deck furniture and things like that all the balconies are being maintained so there's a lot of chipping going on sometimes keeping me awake but that's fine and uh, maintenance general painting of the ship in order to keep it in a good condition ready for when we're back sailing again so it's very important to us that we do that charlotte smith got it polar bear oh we got another one emily archer you got polar bear as well correct and i think that's the only two polar bears great one though elephant is close one tonya p elephant we did have an elephant um i don't have a photo for you but maybe i can get that up in one stream my uh, cabin steward has been very busy since he made that first monkey and we've had i think i've had about uh 10 animals now something like that i had to get him to take a few away otherwise they're overcrowding the room there's no room for me um and i think i've got all the towels that are on the ship at the moment in here so uh but i want to keep a few up here for you so you can see them see his handiwork i'm very impressed by the polar bear i'm going to bring it over to you i think that's pretty impressive don't you He actually uses he actually uses tape um, to colour in the and then colours in the tape with them. That's fine. Don't worry, he's not ruining the towels. We've still got plenty of towels and good nick for you when you come back. Ronald Bernier, thank you very much for that super chat. I appreciate it. You're going to be on the island in April. Maybe I'll be back on the island. Who knows? I was there for two years previously. Uh, there's a few videos from the island as well. Uh, if you want to check out on my channel, you can have a look and see what she's like, um, including some going through Panama. So if you haven't done that before, that's quite a cool one to watch. Paul, uh, Joe, uh, yeah, I see your question there, Joe, actually, there's, uh, you have a dog area, you can bring passengers, so passengers, you're not allowed to bring uh, general pets, but service dogs, obviously, you do have a requirement for those from time to time, so uh, in order to do that, we do have an area allocated for the dog, um, and obviously, they can go out in another area for fresh air breaks, where they have their own section in the crew area that's uh, cordoned off just for the dog it's like a like a litter tray if you like for a cat a large area with all the ne necessary uh, sanitary uh, goods so that when the uh, dog needs to go to the toilet it can but thanks for that question and obviously an email so we're aware uh, ggg i see you there from greg and kathy in las vegas when on watch, do you still find the wildlife sightings, whales, dolphins, etc., exciting? I do still find them exciting. It depends on what they're going and what's happening. If whales are trying to hit the ship, then I don't find it too exciting. I have to dodge them. But um, but most of the time, it's quite cool to see, especially up in Alaska. I do love it up there. I, I had some orcas once, and the thing with orcas, they're faster than you are, so they will uh, do what they need to do, and they come and play with the ship sometimes as well. So that's amazing. I still enjoy the dolphins whenever they come to say hello the same situation with those uh, even the other day in port we had a turtle just off the bow uh, swimming around in the waves so that was quite cool to see uh, once we're alongside uh, but yeah I do still enjoy the wildlife I remember coming out of San Francisco last year surrounded by whales and dolphins and everything and we just were heading through just making sure we're staying well clear for more but it was amazing to see just on all sides and uh, quite incredible um I did see another question I wanted to get in. Paul, there you are. Paul, you've been asking some great questions and putting some great comments on my video, so I appreciate those. Uh, still required to stay in uniform, even with no guests on board. Yes, we are. Uh, obviously, if the captain really wanted to, he could probably lower it so we didn't have to. But when we go for food and things in the evenings, they're not requiring us to wear uniform anymore, anymore which is nice. Uh, it's only when working during the day. Um, also, I think for you guys it keeps the channel consistent if i'm wearing a uniform i may even continue to put on throw on a shirt and some stripes when i get home so that you have this sort of continuity in the channel so people sort of know have some sort of general idea of what i do on board um just from what i'm wearing oh captain's announcement Good evening. new captain on board apologies for this 
I don't have any control. Uh, new captain on board, Paolo Rivera. Very good captain, very experienced. Looking into another productive day into I want to take a listen what he does is he updates us every day on what's going on around the fleet and on board the ship. Placing inmates on board various ships in our fleet. So Connie Sam are the four specific ships. Now this is live. I didn't tell him that I was streaming, so luckily he didn't I don't think he did this on purpose. This happened yesterday and moved over 84 officers who joined in Mexico in the last 7 to 14 days. Taking my Colin screen away as well. These were relieved with the heading home by charters and commercial flights, including a first wave of leavers who departed on a KLM the chat was waiting. yesterday. More joiners will be arriving by the Manila Charter Panama today. Got some questions here on the chat, guys, whilst we're waiting, so I can get answering for you. Members were getting closer to home, with onward travel being arranged in the coming days. We appreciate the hard work and many hours that have gone into coordinating these two-way charters. It's nice to see that all this effort come to a final fruition. In Europe, quite interesting. Can go on a while depending on how many ships have uh, <laughs> sent people home today. So we might be here for a while. Tell me if you can still hear me though over the over the volume of the chat. Um, many of you might have sailed with Paolo before. He's been in the company a long time, Captain Rivera. So let me know if you have. Good, good question there, Michael. Is a, a very big concern, a very big so Michael, let me get onto your question then whilst the captain's still talking, the Panama Canal fees, so it's done by the, uh, depending on what cargo you have, so for the size of ship, for, for a tanker, how much fuel you can carry, for example, for general cargo, sort of the capacity of the holds, and for a container ship, the number of containers uh, capacity, so it doesn't matter whether or not they're on board or not. For us, obviously, it's done by um, number of cabins and occupancy. So for us, it costs so, about we half, well, for the Island Princess, it was about half a million uh, dollars to go through um, one way. So if, but if that is a day trip to the Gatun, I believe they include that in one charge for us. Um, so if we just go through to Gatun, Lake Anchorage and come back again, then that's all included. Whereas for the coal, I've never been through, but I'd imagine it's a little bit less because we can take fewer passengers than the Island Princess. But thanks for that question, Michael. This is something anyway that is being discussed between uh, our people ashore, uh, our management and the medical department ashore. In Manila, Crown Princess has okay. received all the 100% of PCR tests for the 1,400 Filipino teammates that they were on board. Good. This is one of the largest cohorts of any ships in the bay. And the repatriation of this, this Filipino is uh, progressing very well. 500 uh, is embarked already. Rest, okay, guys, uh, thanks for letting me know. You can still hear me. See you there, Joe. Thanks for that. And Emily. Shyla Rose, welcome back. Always welcome on the channel. How rude of the captain. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. No, it's fine. He didn't know. I should have I should have seen it happening. Usually the announcement comes a bit earlier, and I obviously didn't think that this one's coming later today. But it, you never know what's going to happen. Few more ships achieving the Can I whistle? Non operational men. Um, one of theirs is the Eurodown, the Twitterdown. Xavier Rivera. Can you so, whistle? I can whistle, but not. Moving, uh, I can't do the, the kind of high pitch whistle, whistle that you might uh, need. And I can't replicate the ship's whistle quite yet. But I can whistle uh, in the normal way. Okay. It's like my dancing question. Um, Peter, I already answered where I am. I'm in Curacao in the Caribbean. If you're just tuning in, thanks for that question. Uh, Richard, I think I've seen you on here before. I'm about to start my deck cadet ship in Glasgow. One thing I've always wondered if how time works 
on the ship, especially crossing time zones, does that affect your watch times? Yes, Richard. So, especially 12 to 4, they always do the time changes at night normally. Um, so it's my responsibility to put the clocks, the ship's clock one hour forward, one hour back, depending on the time change. Um, he's just saying about the Caribbean leaving, as I told you before. Um, so Richard, I change the clocks, however we share the load. So for example, if you go one hour back, that's one hour extra of work, which means every, every watch does one uh, 20 minutes extra. So 8 to 12 will finish at 20 past midnight. I will start at 20 past midnight, but then finish early at 3.40. However, you have to remember that I did the extra hour in the middle when I put the clocks back. Um, and then the four to eight will come early. They'll come at 3.40, but they've already had 40 minutes extra sleep. So everybody still gets a bit of sleep. Uh, when it's now forward, actually, that sometimes is quite nice, but we do, we take over early. We take over at 20 to midnight, we put the clocks forward at uh, 2 a.m. And then it's 3 a.m. And then we, uh, hand over back to 4 to 8 at 4 20. So Catherine's just saying that we're going to be taking a few days out at sea as I said probably until the 30th um, we'll see how it goes. Adam Thorpe, Captain Rivera was Rivera, sorry, was a captain on the Sapphire on the Norwegian Fields last year. He does love doing a long announcement. He likes, he likes his announcements but he's got a lot to go through. There we go. Thank you Captain for that update. Um, be sure to pass on those to you and any opportunity I get. Um, maybe you heard it firsthand, a few of those. I know I did it before with the last captain as well in one of my first videos. Yeah, beautiful screens come back, which is excellent. Okay, let's go on to some more questions. Shall we do one from the video? I suppose I should get them in as people took the time to comment previously on past videos. Uh, one to number four, I believe which is uh, Jean-Francois again. He told me I, I pronounced his name perfectly, which is good news because I really wasn't sure when I was doing that. Um, another question, he always likes to get a few questions in between the live streams and I thank him for those. So soon you get off the ship, enjoy what should be a three month vacation until your next contract, right? That's correct. Usually it'll be three on three off approximately. I'm hoping for three months at least on this vacation, having just done a five month vacation. So if the company's watching, you can Leave me at home for three months, if you like, please. Um, and are you an employee who gets paychecks every two weeks, even during those three months, or do you get paid only on a contract? Uh, so it used to be that I only got paid on contract. I, I think I discussed this in my first stream, um, but now I'm on salary uh, as second officer starting this year. Um, we all went to salary, so I get paid every month, but it's only once per month, not every two weeks. And that goes directly into my account, and so it's so rolling salary and you work so many days in the year obviously now i've accumulated a lot of time which means for the rest of the year i don't have much left to work so i shouldn't have to come back to sea for more than another two months this year which is really good news um so it should be a nice chilled second half of the year after a very busy start so thank you for those questions jean francois i appreciate it right let's see what people are putting in the chat paul Another question from you. Hi, Paul. What's the next position up that you're moving towards? So the next position after this would be first officer, also known as navigator. Um, so basically for passage planning, I've only just started as first contract senior second, and I'm quite enjoying this role, this time, time schedule, that kind of thing. It allows me to have a lot of free time for my own uh, personal self uh, whilst on board because of the way the watches work. Uh, you do most of your work at night um and just during the mid afternoon so between 12 and 6 you basically work flat out in the afternoon and midnight to 4 which means after 6, 6 p.m you've got time um to then take some time for yourself and um basically chill out go to the gym that kind of thing so i'm quite enjoying this pattern i'm not in any rush to step up at this stage like i said just first contract i'd expect to be in this rank probably for at least one to two years uh, before i'm looking to step up the company also likes for you to have your masters uh, which I'll be not going for for another year or so at least. So we'll see how that goes and see what how we move on from there. But thank you for that question, Paul. See a question there from Vicky. When crew returns to start a new contract, do they usually go back to the same ship or is the ship assignment usually different? Uh, it does vary. Sometimes they like the company likes to keep uh, some continuity in the fleet by keeping people going back to the 
the same ship and you can request to come back. Also, sometimes it makes for easier life for leavers. I know at the moment they're certainly trying to send people back to a ship they've already been on, so there's not having to be this extra handover period, um, keeping people on board even longer. So that's a good thing. Um, I did two years on the Island Princess and then came across the Coral, which is sister ship, so essentially the same ship as well. Um, so we tend to do things like that. A lot of the captains that have been here on the Coral have also been on the island and vice versa. And usually a captain is assigned to a ship for two to three years. And most of the bridge team are usually on a ship for about two years as well. Thank you for that question, Vicky. Debbie, you're asking if I'll be on the Coral for September 27th, sailing to Panama Canal. Uh, hopefully I'm still not here and uh, I don't plan to be back uh, by the end of September yet, I don't think. Maybe that might be the first cruise I do when I get back. Um, if that goes ahead, which hopefully it will. Um, so we'll, we will see. Uh, I don't even have a rotation yet, so I may end up on a different ship. It may also depend on where my girlfriend goes, because I certainly want to be staying with her as much as possible. And she's, um, she's not got a contract yet for the future. So we will see uh, what she gets and we'll try to use our link to be together, hopefully. Thanks for that question. What else have we got? Let's go through. Paul Hutchinson, do you have to pay taxes and what currency has everyone paid? Everyone pays different currencies. I've asked this, people have uh, been asking this one as well in the past. So uh, US dollars is the most common currency on board, but for Europeans, there's quite a few on the Euro. Uh, and for myself, all the Brits are on the pounds. Irish are obviously on the Euro as well. Um, so pound for me and uh, we do have a tax exemption as seafarers provided we work so many days and uh, out of the country so many days in the year um, we do have a tax exemption which is nice um, but any other income that I have in addition to my seafaring income I obviously do have to pay tax on as a UK resident thanks for that question good afternoon Colo welcome thanks for coming along but any questions that I missed? Lancashire lad. I've been on that Fleetwood lawn boat many times in the 90s and up to the bridge. I live near Fleetwood. Yeah, I was in Fleetwood um, for my for my uh, cadetship. Lancashire lad, Callum Priestley. I think you're, I think you're answering someone else's question maybe for me. But thanks for that. Um, but yeah, I was I never did the ferry myself, but uh, I was living up in Fleetwood for three years essentially between my ships and uh i've got quite a connection with that place now uh certainly down going down to blackpool for the odd night out and things as well as you do and going down to pleasure beach uh really good fun so i had some fun in those years up in fleetwood all right should we go to the next question from the past videos then i think we're looking at number five william miller so this is going back to again the port operations and the current minimum minimal minimum non-operational money I'll get it out eventually. I've got a tongue twister. Uh, I'm curious as to why about 100 crew are required to keep a cruise ship in warm layup while a cargo ship can sail with about 25. Good question. And um, obviously, the cruise ship has a lot more to it in a lot of ways. So obviously, our accommodation size is huge in comparison with a cargo ship's accommodation block. And therefore, that takes a lot more maintenance, heating, cooling, ventilating, um, general maintenance, making sure everything stays up to a certain condition. Within that, we have lots of other things going on, obviously a lot more lights, a lot more electronics, uh, a lot more plumbing systems, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to make sure we have the team on board that can maintain all of those. That our work orders have not disappeared just because we've stopped having passengers on board. Obviously the crew that are on board now are mainly deck and technical. There's very few hotel left on board. And they're only really here to do the admin and making sure that they can keep on top of the paperwork required from their side and work orders as well. Um, but the majority will be for the deck and tech. So we're here to make sure the, the ship stays maintained. As I said, I took some footage of the guys going around on deck and maintaining some of the deck furniture and things like that. Um, and some electrical works. Also, operations are still going on. We still are operating as a ship and our bridge teams and engine room teams are larger than those on a cargo ship. Most cargo ships have uh, unmanned engine rooms or engine room control rooms. Um, and therefore their engineer, there'll only be one on watch anyway. He'll be in the cabin resting. And if there's an alarm, he can then go and answer it. Whereas ours are manned 24 hours a day. 
the engine room and the bridge. And there's one officer always in the engine room space along with two fitters. There's one uh, engineering officer in the engine control room. And then we have two bridge officers, deck officers on the bridge and two helmsmen available at all times as well. So that goes on 24 seven. That's already a bigger bridge team. And then because of the extra maintenance and things, we have additional ranks in between those uh, for senior management. You don't, you don't go straight from chief mate to captain. You've also got a safety officer who's responsible for a lot of the training and drills and extra things that don't happen on board a cargo ship. Um, and the list can go on for a long time, really. So there's a lot more essentially to do. Obviously, cargo ships, they have a lower, lower manning. It is the way it is. But they have a smaller accommodation block. They have a smaller engine room as well because that's valuable cargo space. So you only have a smaller engine room down the aft end that will run from the shaft through to the engines the propulsion system um, and beyond that you're going to have cargo holds so uh, again a smaller space to maintain less equipment to maintain and therefore a smaller team even though i know that guys work very hard on the cargo ships and have a massive appreciation for what they do without them 90 percent of the world trade wouldn't even exist uh, so probably something that a lot of people don't even think about uh, about all these ships still at sea, crew members that are still struggling to get home. Um, some guys have been on board. They're looking to go to Panama, flag of Panama, just to prove for some crew members to go to 17 months on board a ship. So that shows you the issues that we're having of getting seafarers home at the moment. Um, I've seen a lot of guys uh, put online that have just celebrated 12 months on board. So they've spent a year of their life on board working. Um, despite the MLC restriction of 10 months, now flags are kind of have to just extend because that work still has to be done. And uh, the guys can't get home at the moment or they can't get relievers to the ships. So it is a difficult time for seafarers and for the Merchant Navy in general. And I appreciate those guys on cargo ships that are working hard, even with their small teams. Um, I am certainly lucky to be on a cruise ship at the moment, for sure. Thanks for that question though, William. Good, was that William? Yeah, William, a good question. Thanks for that. Um, I hope I answered that enough for you. So we go then to the last question from the videos. Jean-Francois, again, I actually broke yours into two sections because uh, you asked quite a few questions and it was easier for me to break down to help the chat flow. Um, so say the company decides to downside just during your vacation. There were 100 openings for first officer, 200 wanting the job. Do you get it based on seniority? Um, Obviously, my position is senior second, not first officer, so I wouldn't be put into that position. Seniority helps long, uh, longevity in that position. If you've been to the ships that are currently operating, then obviously that's important as well. Um, I'm sure they'd make some sort of agreement with all the officers uh, and the ones that they wanted to retain. Others maybe let go, depending on experience, time with the company, that kind of thing. Until that really happens, though, we don't know exactly how they'll do it. Uh, if you don't get a first officer job, can you display someone with less seniority in a lower rank to stay employed, or do you get furloughed without pay? So there is an option that been to be furloughed. Uh, is an option that some of the companies are taking. We're uh, working on that as well in Princess because of the opportunities that come with the government furlough packages. Uh, so they're making sure that the guys at home that can't get back to sea can still get paid, which is very important. Um, and for me, I mean, you could step down. I'd probably step down to second officer. It doesn't bother me as long as they keep paying me the same money. Um, my confirmed rank is still second officer. This is my first rank, my first trip as senior second. So that wouldn't really bother me if they needed a second officer on board, if it was willing to get my seat time and allow me to still get paid. And that's the important thing. Um, obviously, there's still, though, you're displacing another second officer, which is unfortunate if you're doing that. And I don't think many officers would would go for that option unless it was uh, certainly quite a desperate situation. And then finally, I think you asked in normal times, how long before your three month vacation is up, would you secure a position for a next contract? Um, so normally it would be in advance. Uh, normally we would sometimes up to a year in advance uh, for rotations, especially if you're going back to the same ship, it's much easier because you can do a direct rotation with the other officer. So you just end up relieving each other every three months. Um, However, sometimes, you know, it's a last minute thing. You can get, I've known people get calls two days before. Okay, we need you on a ship. Can you come? Yeah, okay, no problem. And again, you can request to move, to move ships and try and get onto a different ship, which I've done quite a few times. I requested to come to the call. Um, so it is an option that they can change your rotation, even if it's already been allocated. But thank you for that question. 
Jean-Francois, I appreciate uh, all your questions that you keep putting on these chats. So do keep putting some down. Hopefully this chat has made you think of some more for next time. Have we got any more questions in the chat? So Paul, does non-operational just mean not cruising or not sufficient staff to go to sea? Uh, so to make this one of the last questions. Um, so non-operational doesn't mean that non-operational operational means that right now we don't have it's not an operation we don't we're not in operation as a passenger vessel with lots of passengers on board again if we want to have passengers on board we couldn't man it in the way we are right now it wouldn't be safe to do so i don't think so we need would have to bring more crew members back for sure but in terms of a ship operation we can still do all the necessary um basic day-to-day -day ship compliance and operations as required. So we are still operational, we're just not operational as a functioning passenger ship at the moment. Any other questions at the end? Bridge tour, Alex, yeah, I'm working on that. As I said, I'm gonna do it in a different way. Uh, probably uh, want to get home by the time I've accumulated all the bits and made different videos to put together. Uh, that'll probably be coming to you when I get home uh, next month. So thanks for that. Hopefully I'll be getting that to you. Okay, I think that's all the questions for the most part. Thomas Hall, have you got one? Maybe my chat's not loaded properly. Um, looks funny where you are today. Just ask a question when cruise ships will go back. Will it be self-serve buffet or manned now? Uh, Thomas, a lot of the ships I've heard are looking to get rid of the buffet completely. I haven't, that hasn't been confirmed. It's just a rumor that I'm hearing. Um, obviously there's added risk with the buffet service and Certainly, I think if it's if we do continue with buffet service, then you will be served the food. There'll be a person on each station serving, a bit like PNR Australia, if you've ever been there, um, rather than self service. It just doesn't make sense to have that potential cross contamination. Um, but as long as everyone keeps hand washing their hands, I think that's an important thing. And um, we should still be able to do uh, buffet service, I think. Let's see. Thanks for that question, though. Okay, guys, I think that's most of the questions hopefully I've answered. Uh, any more coming up? What have you got? How, what and how many officers of each rank are on each shift of navigational watch? It's a good question. So I, I will also include this in the bridge tour when I do it. That's always how we tend to open the tours uh, if you've been on board a bridge tour uh, on a ship. So uh, each, there's three senior officers and three junior officers. The juniors are all third officers. Um, so they have one stripe. Uh, the eight to 12 watch on Princess is usually the second officer. So that's two stripe. And the uh, senior second is me, two and a half stripe. And then we have a first officer, also known as the navigator, who's three stripes. And so that's the rank system. And the first officer usually does four to eight, me on 12 to four, second officer, eight to 12. And we continue, obviously that's morning and night. So throughout the day, we do four hours on, eight hours off of a bridge watch. And that's how we rotate the watches. So um, man 24 hours, as I said before, which is very important. I think that's all the questions then. Guys, thank you once again for tuning in to this live stream. I appreciate your support and being here, especially you guys staying up late in the UK. I know it's getting late for you, but then it's going to turn around. You're going to get it nice and early at some stage and the others might have to get up a bit earlier or a bit later uh, to see it. So we'll see how that operates when I do get home. Um, likely to be another one on board though, I guess, two weeks time. So do come back for that. I will come up with a subject topic and I will use your questions. So please, if you haven't already, put a question in the comments as well and I will read that and I'll apply it for next time. So thanks a lot for tuning in. I do love to see you in the chat and love to see you getting involved with the channel. We have grown a fantastic community. The subs are still coming in, which is excellent. And uh, I've got lots more material for you. So thanks a lot. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.